Um, Tom Clark, uh, who I and a couple of the other board members had the pleasure of uh, uh, getting to know over uh, a meal just before coming here, flew in from Boston. Uh, he spoke to the Great Lakes Humanist Society uh, in Mount Pleasant last night, and he's here with us tonight. Um, he is the founder of the Center for Naturalism, and the website for that is naturalism.org. He writes and lectures on naturalism, free will, consciousness, addiction, and related topics. He's also the host of a couple uh, philosophy cafes uh, out in that area, and uh, I'll let him tell you the rest, so please welcome Tom. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, and uh, board members and members of this august organization. And I'm, I'm very pleased and, and impressed to see the, the group here tonight. I wish we had half the turnout for similar events in Boston. So uh, I've been hearing a bit about Jeff, all very good news. He's, he's a bit of a slacker, but somehow he's managed to put all, pull all of us together. Uh, and I'm also sorry that I missed the first styrofoam free event, but such is my fate to be at the 179th as opposed to the 180th meeting. 179 meetings, I am vastly impressed. So naturalism. Naturalism, unfortunately for many people, is not about unclothed activities. I get a lot of traffic that way, so don't put it down. People come for the wrong reason, but stay for the right reason. Naturalism, philosophical, scientific naturalism, that's what I want to talk to you all about tonight. The thesis that I'll present is that I want to recommend naturalism as an explicit, comprehensive worldview that names what we basically have in common as free thinkers, skeptics, humanists, atheists, agnostics. Naturalism, basically that we, we don't have to believe or suppose that anything supernatural exists in order to lead meaningful, moral, and ethical lives. The thesis is simply that we're natural creatures. And now there's nothing particularly controversial about that from your perspective, I, I would think, although I know there are a range of beliefs in this group that's fine. But what I want to do is take the, this essence of naturalism, namely the denial of the supernatural, and say that it's a positive philosophy, one that we can live our lives by, and also to extend it from the mere denial of the supernatural up there, that is God or the theistic idea of the supernatural, and to deny that there's anything supernatural about us. That's the basic idea. So to talk about naturalism and to extend it to ourselves. And what I want to say is that understanding causality is the key to naturalism. It's the key, it's the heart, at the heart of what to be a naturalist is all about. It's causality. As far as I know, the Center for Naturalism is the only organization going at the moment that's specifically promoting naturalism as a positive, comprehensive worldview. Now, but this is not to say that you are not naturalists. You probably are in most respects in that you don't take the idea of the supernatural particularly ser seriously. Although you might say, my God, occasionally, or God bless you if someone says this. <coughs> These are either metaphorical or just tradition. You don't take them seriously as naturalists. Now, what's the significance of all this? Why is it important? Well, I think the significance and importance are becoming rapidly clear to us as we enter a faith-based era, which I hope we'll soon get out of in terms of the current administration and its view of the world. The mainstream press is sounding a lot more like free inquiry and the humanist magazine than it ever has before. And it's no surprise, because what are we encountering? We're encountering a wave, I won't say the, the T word, but a, a very large wave of faith-based uh, approach to the world uh, out of Washington and, and many other places. So the, the importance of all this is to suggest that we, there are two views on offer, a faith-based view of the world and a more or less evidence-based view of the world. And evidence, as you might guess, is related to science. And science, I will say, is at the heart of naturalism. So a lot depends on this because if you take faith as your way of viewing the world, you'll have certain ideas about what exists in the world and certain approaches to it personal, interpersonal, and social policy. Whereas if you take science as your way of knowing and are more or less naturalistic in your worldview, then other things exist 
and other ways, of other sorts of policies might be more appropriate given your naturalistic worldview. Specifically, there are two different views of who we are that are on offer, depending on which sort of evidence you take to be the case. If you're faith-based, you might suppose that we have souls. That, of course, is the traditional view that most people have in this country, that we have are of two natures, the body on the one hand and the soul, the immaterial soul on the other. That's, I would suggest, a faith-based view of human nature. On the other <coughs> hand, we have on offer the naturalistic view of ourselves, that we don't have souls, that we're fully physical, natural creatures. And that gets to the heart of what it means to be human, who we are, what's it all about, the big questions. So depending on which view you take, and again, this isn't controversial, I don't think, for anyone here, depending on what view you take, you end up with a very different idea about who, who I am, who we all are, in terms of our, our innermost nature. So this isn't academic. It relates to the society at large and to our very notion of ourself, the one that we carry around in our heads day in, day out. Now, as free thinkers, as humanists, as skeptics, you are all naturalistic or naturalistically inclined in your view of the world. But what I'm going to suggest tonight is that many of you perhaps have not taken naturalism all the way. What I want to do, as I said, is to extend naturalism into ourselves and to look at what it means to be a fully natural physical creature. I think by adopting a thoroughgoing and what I'll call inclusive naturalism, that is a naturalism that includes us completely in the natural world, we can find a powerful and effective and ethical worldview, a good alternative to the dualist worldviews that are widespread both locally and in this country, not so much in Europe apparently, uh, but the United States is a hotbed of dualism. Dualism, again, meaning soul versus body, the supernatural versus the natural. So what is naturalism? Well, it's based in science. It says naturalism really is to take science as your way of knowing about the world, about what ultimately exists. If you stick with evidence, with the latest scientific findings, with, with a more or less well-grounded scientific theories, which are subject to change, but are fairly well established, then you'll be led to suppose that there's a single natural world that we're all a part of. When science explains something, what does it do? It places the object of its explanation in relationship to everything else that it understands. So what does that mean? It means that science, if you take it as your way of knowing about the world and you don't dally with faith or revelation or authoritative religious texts. If you take science as your way of knowing about the world, things are connected. Everything is connected, not in a fuzzy, mystical way, but in a very real, concrete way. So naturalism is to take science as your way of knowing about the world and to be led to the conclusion that what science says exists is what exists. In other words, your epistemology, your way of knowing about the world, which is science, you take evidence, scientific evidence, evidence is to the, the way to decide your beliefs about what exists, that, that's your epistemology, your way of knowing. That leads to an ontology, namely the things that exist. The things that exist are those that science ultimately shows are there. Now, this is not to say that science is the be-all and end-all. We don't decide to have for breakfast on the basis for science, or we don't choose a mate based on science. We don't choose um, many things, and we, and we don't appreciate many things in the light of science. We appreciate most things without bothering about scientific evidence. So I don't want to be scientistic in my claim about science. So that's a sin to avoid. Scientism is not the same as being scienti scientific. And I'm not, I don't mean also to be reductionistic in the sense of supposing that we can understand everything at the molecular or the atomic level. 